Welcome everyone to Around the ACL. Michelle Thompson here with Trey Ryder and Anthony Ione to get into another great episode, getting ready for the Open in West Virginia. I had to look at that for a second. Like, Where are we in these Opens? Number 11, you guys. We're just trucking along, uh, though not too many left. And then we're going to get into a lot of news around the league. We had quite a few conferences and states uh, events happening this past weekend. I know, Trey, you were working one. I got to tune into some of that, some, yeah. some Jamie Graham magic which I'm sure we'll touch on. Uh, we're going to have contender and pretender um, to find out who we think could win a national singles event. We're going to talk about sleepers and then wrap it up with our hot takes. But Trey, I know you had a busy weekend. Uh, how was it working that conference? Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was cool. It was kind of like the last Carolina conference event. So it was, we'll talk a little bit more about it, like my analysis or whatever, when we talk about news around the league, but it kind of felt like a weekend for the OGs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they played really well, but it was cool just to see. And even just like, they decided to do a, a picture of all like the pros that were in the building and not, like they all lined up and I was like, man, that's a lot of pro players from North and South Carolina. I mean, and a lot of really great players too. So um, it was, it was, it was really cool to be a part of. And it was um, got a lot of viewers for, for a live stream at a conference event. So it was, it was cool just to be, you know, um, talking through that and talking all about it and being able to call the games. It was a long day. It was like 12 hours, but um, I don't know. I, I kind of like doing them because it kind of brings me back old school. Like, lets me get back to my roots. Like, I, I always like to say my roots in cornhole were me sitting behind a cell phone on Facebook Live. Like, and Anthony knows that knows that vibe too. It's just sitting oh, yeah. behind and just just commentating games and interacting with the chat and and you know kind of doing it by myself. And so um, roots. I. Yeah, the roots. I used to do that, you know, back at my first ever 2017, you know, world championship back when they called it Cobbs, right? It was, yes. Um, I, I literally just remember jumping from game to game on a cell phone, commentating different games. And, and it was, uh, my, my voice is in much better shape than, uh, <laughs> that it was way back then, but it was definitely cool to be a part of it this weekend. Yeah. Anthony, did you catch any of that? I did I, a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, basketball has been kicking up pretty crazy. It's uh, it's on another level, guys. I told little man, <clears throat> so he's in eighth grade, and it was like, all right. I was like, school's plan A, right? And he's like, nah, it's actually plan B. And I was like, ah, that doesn't work for me. So we have an agreement that uh, plan A is going to be basketball as long as he's killing it at my plan A, which is his plan B, and that's school. So, um, yeah, it's getting intense. So he's he's – three months away from starting uh, the high school summer program. Um, so, you know, he's uh, just turned 14. So we're starting to see the growth. So it's, we're taking it. I was like, all right, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it. We're not going to just mess around. If you, if you really feel like this is something you want to give a run at, <clears throat> I need 110% and we're going to go hundred percent. I'll give you 110%. So we, we've done, we're doing it all. He started a uh, 16 week. Uh, now we're 14 and we're starting to turn into a man where um, we were on a 16 week uh, power, strength, and vertical program. So four days a week, me and him are hammering it out in, in the, uh, we have a, you know, a sweet little gym set up and, you know, that's an hour and a half, uh, four days a week. He's, he's killing it in workouts. Um, you know, we're doing the personal training. We're doing the practices, the tournaments. Uh, we're even looking at film. We're looking at mindset and me. Should we talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that in the past? So I'm going down the, we're looking at diet. We're looking at, you know, vitamins, you know, that support growth and bones. And so we're doing everything possible. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's intense. Actually pretty cool. We, uh, I'm tired of rebounding. So we have a, uh, we, we have this rebounder, right? It's just kind of this big net thing that he shoots and it grabs it, but it, you know, it kind of just drops it towards you. So I was like, yeah, that doesn't mm -hmm. work for me. So I rigged this thing up on Friday. It's pretty sweet, but it's, um, 
you know, the, the engineering part took over, but it, it comes down the, uh, the rebounder. I had this rail system that catches the ball. It runs 23 feet all the way out to the three pointer. It crosses the free throw line, the high school three, the NBA three, and it goes into a ball rack. So essentially he can shoot from, from, a, a, an NBA 23, nine, 23 foot, nine inches. That ball will literally come all the way right back to him in a rack. So now I'm out there with just a counter, you know, like I don't have to run around rebounding on those counting shots and counting makes. So uh, it's getting intense. It's getting real intense. <laughs> you would do that. <laughs> it's very on brand. You're very, yes, very on brand. Yes. I like the ingenuity though. I always look for uh, ways to do things more efficiently. So I'm, I'm on board as the, as well. Uh, but yes, our cornhole players could take a few uh, pages out of those books of really, this isn't a sport and you are an athlete. So take it serious. So I like that yeah. attitude. Speaking of, let's get into our open coming up this weekend in West Virginia, March 8th through 10th. Uh, Trey, who who's sticking out to you? Yeah, this is a really interesting lineup of of players. Um, again, as we get towards the pro season, we're getting towards like the nitty gritty. Like we're starting to see a lot of these top players try to, uh, you know, buckle in, lock in. I mean, it's we're going to see this is getting closer and closer to what we're going to see when it comes national time. And so yeah. looking at the list. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an opportunity to see people like Mark Richards and Tony Smith. Both of them playing together. They're playing singles. I mean. Two of the best players in the world, those that finished number one, number two last year. We've seen them already win and open together this year. Um, and at times, Mark Richards has been the most dominant player in the world the past three or four months. And Tony Smith, you know, before that, the, the three and four months prior to that, he was the most dominating player. So now comes the question, are they getting tuned up and then are they ready to go, right? Um, this feels like one of those events that Mark Richards just finds a way to win sometimes, right? It's, it's a stacked field. It's pro time. You know, he's faded a little bit from two or three months ago. You know, we've been talking about the, you know, the everybody else except JBJ. We've been talking about some of these amateur players. We've been talking about, you know, whoever it may be. But sometimes it always comes back just to Mark Richards and what he can do. So I think it'll be interesting to see him competing um, this weekend and see how he does. I expect him to have a, you know, if he doesn't have a final four finish, I think that's a disappointment. So my, my standards are quite high for Richards. I think Tony Smith needs to do a little bit more, um, you know, getting ready and getting that mindset ready for the pro season. But again, I don't view Smith the same way that I do Richards. Like it's not an, it's an open event. So like Tony Smith is always just going to be a wild card, right? The one thing I can yep. count on when it comes to Richards is that if it's a cornhole event, he's going to show up and he's going to play. Right. Um, and he's Dude, you could run into really him in the life. backyard and he's going to give you 130%. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're just messing around, right? Nah. Yeah. Real. Yeah. It's, <laughs> he's still going to be methodical every way. I mean, um, and then, but then you have, you know, I think you got Ryan Trader is going to be there. I think this is a really good, you know, opportunity for Trader to continue his dominating performance across this open series. He doesn't need to, he's shown that he is that, but. There's a reason I had him what third in my in my rankings as far as the power rankings go a few weeks ago because he's far and away been probably the most consistent player um, across these open series. So I expect him to have a really high finish. I look at you know people like Devin Harbaugh, a top ten player from last year. I had him outside of my power rankings, and it feels like every time we put someone outside of our power rankings, Anthony, they they show up and they deliver. So this is an opportunity for Harbaugh to do just that. He's a top ten level talent. The question is, is what day are we talking about? And and will this weekend be a, a, a foreshadowing into what he can accomplish this pro season? Another top rookie in Jeremiah Ellis, right? I mean, the Ellies have been clamoring for a big <laughs> Jeremiah Ellis win. And I think if there's any positive to his performance That was you, so right, Mish? Did you come up with that? <laughs> so yeah, I didn't come up awesome. with the name. I, I called him awesome. Swifties. <laughs> I love it. And someone else called him Ellies. Yeah, so the Ellies are they're, they're they're clamoring for a big win from Jeremiah, and I think he's coming close. And I think the positive news for them is he hasn't won it yet; he hasn't peaked yet. And I think that's really really good news um, for those that are for those Ellies out there. I'm also really excited to watch Adam Hisner play again. Um, you know, I think when we talk about um, uh, and, and Trey Birchfield in uh, as well, they're playing as a doubles team, right? I mean it's almost like as if we've just expected them to not continue this run because they've been so good. But right now, I mean, I look at this field and I got to think to myself, it's Mark Richards, Tony Smith. And then right up there has got to be Trey Birchfield, Adam Hisner, based on what we've seen 
recently over the past um, over, over the past few months. So, I mean, I think they're going to be a really, really tough team to beat. I mean, we're talking about now Trey Birchfield having over, you know, what is it, 10 now open yeah. doubles titles, which is just yeah. outrageous. Um what I what was what was interesting for me, and this is kind of a little bit sidebar, but I went we went through the exercise this past week of actually naming all of the different titles that Trey Birchfield has and putting them on the championship title list. That way we have better access to them. And you know, looking back through how dominant Trey Birchfield has been in doubles has been incredible, but he hasn't had that singles finish since 2021, which is crazy to me. Um, that the, the last time Trey Birchfield won a singles event. Uh, at the open or national level was that world championship by, by the robot. So Alex Rawls, he's, you know, top, top two or three player, depending on what you're looking at, he's going to be back. He's got the opportunity to win the entire thing. So there are a lot of really, really great players in the running for this weekend. I think this is going to be as close as we get to a tune up. Um, you know, this one in Michigan, both going to be opportunities for players to fine tune their skills. And we're going to see the best of the best, uh, that these players have to offer this weekend. So I think that's something that we got to be excited for. Absolutely. Anthony, how about you? Yeah, so we're starting to see, you know, we're still having some of those non-dedicated pro partners out there messing around, but I feel like we're starting to see some of the dedicated pro partners pulling together as we're moving into the uh, into the first national. Um, uh, actually, right out of the gate, one not together. We have Ethan Walker and Duncan Clemmer uh, teaming up for this one. They just had some recent success at a couple opens ago. They're going to be partnering up. They could be pretty tough. I love seeing Ryan Trader and Alex Hicks pulling together as we come into the uh, into the uh, first national. They're going to be there. 13 and 14 year old uh, standouts. If you're not familiar with these kids, I love the idea of you know two kids getting on an ESPN broadcast, standing in next to two adults and competing. I think that's just such such a cool thought. So those guys are preparing as they come into the season. You mentioned Hisner and Birchfield. I don't think we need to mention much there other than that they're in the field. This would be back-to-back, -back, right? So this would be the third in a row if they win this one? Yeah, yeah. This would Well, back-to-back -back for um, Birchfield, right? Because oh, Birchfield true. won yeah, with true. Thorn. He won with yes. Thorn, then he won with Hisner. But Hisner and Birchfield did win Myrtle Beach. So I think there was like a two or three open gap in between there. But effectively, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, definitely. Could win it. Uh, we're going to have Alec Ryan and Caden Allen teaming up for this one. Not dedicated. Uh, Alec Ryan's partner, Ethan Walker, Caden Allen, Kobe Costanza. They're going to be teaming up with this one. And we've seen uh, Alec Ryan really breaking out lately as we approach the uh, the pro season. So they're going to be tough. Uh, Justin Burton Jr. and Devin Harbaugh coming into this mm -hmm. one together. That one's going to be really tough. Obviously, they're with non-dedicated partners. We got Logan Chamberlain with Burton Malone with Harbaugh this season. Two players coming together could take down the whole thing. We'll have to keep an eye on them. Um, I love this one. Uh, not just that they're coming in dedicated. We know that these guys are working together out of the state of Florida. We got Chris Kingsbury and Alan Rawls making a show in this one. I think to a, a team that could come out and win it, you know, I mean, would we call them sleepers? Not in my opinion, but I think on the national level, they could be considered sleepers to win this one. And I think Alan Rawls, I'd love to see him show that he's still as strong as a singles player as, as I think he is and coming out and taking down singles as well. So they're going to be out in the field. Blaine Roser and Jacob Trzinski teaming up for this one. That's kind of a fun mix uh, of non-dedicated. Blaine Roser teaming up with Co Jordan Kimbrell this season, who were doing really well. And then Jacob Trzinski switching over to Tanner Halbert, but they're going to mix it up here in this open. We're going to have the guys in the field. Uh, Ryan Windsor, this is a fun one. Ryan Windsor, Teaming up with Logan Duppler. If you're not familiar with Logan Duppler, if we talk about sleepers who are not going to be pros this season, maybe at the uh, at the amateur level, this guy's been playing Cornell for like a day. He's he's amazing. Uh, he's a 15 year old kid. Them teaming up is going to be fun as well. Uh, Jacob Gore and Hunter Thorne. We're going to get them into the mix. They can certainly take down that one. Nested Power. We're going to get Almanza Chamberlain. A good mix. We're going to get that one. Um, Gavin Cano and Fisher Hamilton. We've seen the run that Gavin Cano has been on just period. Uh, I feel like this guy is, is certainly due for that big singles win. You know, he's, if he's not second, he's third. He just can continually uh, shows up in the finals. Um, I'd love to see him come out and win singles this weekend, approaching the pro season, kind of breaking that seal. And I think he could be a top five, six player in the pro division in singles as well. 
Um, kind of moving down the list a little bit into maybe not going to win it, but definitely some players uh, keeping an eye on. I love Colby Shearer's game. I love him teaming up with a, a Travis Purser. I think that one's going to be fun. Um, Holland and Davis mixing it up. Josh Holland, that is, with Eric Davis coming out. Holland this season going to be teaming up with Clemmer. Eric Davis with Sorrells. They're going to be coming in uh, for this open. We're going to get Tyler Cobb and Tubby Cobb coming into this one. I feel like I haven't seen the Cobbs in a while. Maybe that's just me, but I feel like they've kind of been off radar for a little bit. They're going to be dedicated pro partners this season. Brothers, obviously. Mish, what do you think about this one? Caleb Batson and Cash Chamness. Team My favorite. Up. I can't wait. <laughs> Let me talk about this one a little bit because uh, it was just a couple weeks ago. Uh, Cash Chamness, if you're not familiar, um, I think he actually might be an elite player this year. Uh, but anyways, we're talking about a seven or no, an eight-year-old, guys. Eight years old. He teams up with Gavin Cano in a regional in Texas a couple weeks ago. They took second out of 88 teams in that regional. Cash Chamness, eight years old, threw a 9.97 over 60 rounds in doubles. Um, he took down in singles. He took down an ex-pro, uh, Kenny Tackett, and he took down the high-profile rookie, Braden Wilson, in singles. And then together, they went through A.J. Sims and Braden Wilson to get to the final. Um, stopped playing Cash through an 11.2 in, in one of those matches against uh, AJ Sims and Braden Wilson to get through some dubs there. So this eight-year-old kid is absolutely popping off. I'm really excited about that, that team, uh, that, that team up. You got a guy in Caleb Batson, who's a veteran. He's been around still a young guy teaming up with cash to kind of, you know, maybe mentor him a little bit and, and raise cash's game to the next level. Uh, we're going to get Gabe Dolan and Jeremiah Ellis. I'm sure that's an Ohio thing. Uh, I really expected more out of Gabe Dolan by now, a guy that I saw before he had his rookie season at Worlds in the advance. I was really impressed with him. Um, I want more out of Gabe Dolan. I think he has the ability to give us that. Uh, Jackson Gore and Quinn Reeves. Uh, Quinn Reeves, another one of those sleepers we might not be talking about at the amateur level. Uh, this kid is talented. Wouldn't be surprised if Jackson Gore and Quinn Reeves came out and shocked a lot of people, took down some big teams. Um, Verona uh, Camarena, I'm loving that one. We're going to get the dedicated players in Ferre Ferreira and Dennis. What do they look like? Uh, Bernaset and Lopez. I really like want to see one. these guys start popping off, right? Dedicated players coming into the open right before a pro national. This one's big. I think they need to make a good run here. Give them some confidence as a doubles team moving in. And to finish it off, Mish. We're going to get a look here at Cody Henderson and his new dedicated pro partner. It is not Adam Hisner, which we're familiar with going back to the archives, right? Of the start of the ACL Cody Henderson teaming up with Ryan Tucker this season. And we're going to get them here at, uh, at open number 11, see what they do. Quiet. Cody Henderson's been quiet. I feel like Philip Lopez has been quiet. So definitely interested to see how they play here. All right, moving into news around the league, we have uh, a bunch of events that happen, but before we get into them, wanted to announce a new uh, offering that we have at the ACL. It's called ACL Academy. This is going to be a really cool way for you to get help improving your game with experts like Anthony is going to be teaching pitch mechanics. Um, just so I'm very clear, I will not be teaching mechanics. Just want to make sure that's out there. <laughs> um, I will be bringing in experts to teach uh, mechanics, but um, I will be helping out with mindset along with some other cool guests. We have. Um, Mish, don't don't just breeze over that. You know, <laughs> Mish is an expert in mindset. If you guys don't know, she's working on her doctorate. So, if there's anybody you want to talk about on the mental side of the game, Mish Mish is certainly that person. Appreciate that. Yeah, definitely uh, have the experience there. Um, so I feel confident in that. However, um, no, not in not in my mechanics. <laughs> but and I would I would suck at mindset. So you know, between the two of us, we're gonna kill it. Everybody has <laughs> their team. lane. Yeah, yeah, Trey's gonna be teaching a, a module two coming up here um, after ninety days. So a lot of cool experts. We're gonna have a jujitsu competitor and coach that's gonna teach the competitors mindset. Um, and then we're also gonna have. I wanted to find a golf coach because I feel like there's so many similarities between golf and cornhole mindset wise, and also with the fluidity of the motions and things like that. So he's super pumped. He was very excited um, and can't wait to teach you guys what he can. And then we have Devin Harbaugh coming on as well as Trip Baker is going to teach how to roll a bag. So I am ready with pen and paper for oh, that. 
the golden <laughs> ticket, the, the the thing everybody wants to learn how to do, right? That's there. right. Yeah. Also, I just confirmed today, Tyler Cobb's going to run the first cornhole clinic in um, in uh, New Orleans, and it's going to be focused on rolling and cutting. Um, so that's going to be a really cool in-person um, opportunity for you to come and work with him. And uh, yeah, all of that is there in the Academy. So you can go to academyacl.com and sign up. And there's a launch rate happening right now. So um, you just use 2024 launch as a discount code and boom, you're in for a discounted rate. So hope to see you in there. Um, I can't wait to be interacting with everybody in the forum. I've got like a health and fitness component since that's also my background. Um, so we're trying to cover all the all the pillars that you need, mindset, mechanics, and health and stamina. Just like Anthony was saying with his son earlier, got to have it all. All of it. Also happening, uh, happened actually, was the France Open. And um, for those of you who are about to say your names, I apologize. Um, American here, doing the best I can. Never took French. Um, so <laughs> uh, in singles, we have Hervé Ferraro. In doubles, we have Gooney Reitz and Emmanuel Vandran. So congrats to you guys for the Carolina conference. As we mentioned, we had Jamie Graham in singles and Jamie Graham in doubles with Frank Maudlin for the Kentucky state. We had Mac guy take down singles and Eric Zockline and Ryan Hart take doubles. And then in the Indiana state, Mark Richards took singles and doubles with Brandon Bo Bobelia. So lots of cool events that happened. Uh, Trey, any thoughts about any of the events that occurred, including the one that you were actually at? Yeah, so I I, I'll, I guess I just talk a little bit right here. I mean, it seems like an OG weekend. Matt Guy winning, you know, I guess Mark Richards is an OG, but like the guy that you should expect Giant. to show up How about play, Giants? Shows, yeah, Giants. The, 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 <laughs> the, the Titans show up and play. So, yeah. uh, look, uh, Jamie Graham, guys, was a problem. <laughs> I mean, he was a problem this weekend. I mean, I've been hearing it. It's crazy. Uh, it's 72 bags in a row at one point in singles absolutely disgusting but i mean going back to doubles so frank model and jamie graham come out boards are a little bit tacky they're throwing shag contrast all cornhole bags they immediately after that game switch to og game changers and both of them throw slick side the entire tournament wow. slick side game changers and you know what they were exactly who everybody wants them to be they were pure domination. I mean, and you know what the out. best part was? The, but here's the best part Everybody was. Everybody no, no, no timeouts. Yeah, no timeouts. But here's the best part. I'll cut you off. They didn't talk to each other. They just they just did their own They, they listened thing. to you, Trey. They heard you. <laughs> uh, now, there were a couple of scenarios where you legitimately needed to call a timeout because, like, it's a weird, like, it's a weird scenario. Figure out what you want to do. But, like, they just did their own thing. And Frank Modlin was aggressive. Jamie Graham was aggressive. They were hitting everything. I mean, it was uh, – they they looked really, really good. And I'll tell you this much. I That team that I saw this weekend is an easily a top 10 team. It may be a top five team. That's how Whoa, good they wow. were. The, now, no, no, no. Now, now, the one thing I'll say is – you, you have to do it more than once. We've been complaining about them not doing it on a consistent basis. So, like, there's still a question mark for me in doubles because I just need to see that on a consistent basis. But that team that I saw doesn't lose to marry very many people at all across any event. Um, and they were just they, – they, they were unbelievable. Second thing I'll add is – well, I'll reiterate is Jamie Graham is never coming out of a power ranking for the rest of this year because <laughs> what he did this weekend was disgusting. I mean, absolutely disgusting. I mean, poor Brandon Davis, he's playing in the elimination bracket because he lost to Frank Modlin early. Another shout out, Frank Modlin throwing well. So Jamie Grant just goes through loose bracket. Just Brandon, Brandon Davis throws a cool 10 4 3 PPR oh, yeah. and scores zero points. Oh, Painful. <laughs> <He> scores. <laughs> That's because Jamie Graham threw Jamie Graham threw a perfect game. 56 bags thrown, 56 bags in the hole against Brandon Davis. And yes. I remember looking over when the game got over and Brandon Davis just looked at me and went, <laughs> "Yeah, what do you do?" Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. You see what I see. So, insane. And then, you know, he threw some in out before and after the, to put the full 72 together, but honestly, he was using incredible. Here's the other thing that that's going to 
that Mish I know saw this weekend that's going to make her grin to ear to ear. You know who was really good this weekend was Eric Davis. He was really? the old. He was the old Eric Davis, and there were at least three or four times I go, "What is this guy doing? Don't do." <gasps> Oh my God, he hit it. (laughs) That's why I love him. (laughs) There were so many times he did that this weekend. He was vintage Eric Davis. He only lost, he lost two games in singles. He took an amateur all the way to the finals and lost with an amateur. In singles, he lost two games. Both games were to Jake Gore, 21 20. And in both games, he had the lead. Wow. I mean, he was he was as good as I had seen him years ago, and that should be exciting for Eric Davis fans and fans of other OG players. So um, Jake Gore was still really, really good. Jordan Kimbrell, really, really, really good. Jamie Graham was just on another level this weekend. Um, so <laughs> Hey, if uh, yeah. Eric's the, the magician, right? So, so like his fans have to have something to do with that, like the you know, like magician's Ooh. assistant or something, right? Like yeah, <laughs> there has to be a play like, there. M- Michelle <laughs> wants a name for herself. She's like, "What can I, I have name to have myself? a name, Give and then I have one. to make a shirt?" Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is so true. All right, uh, Anthony, anything to add before we move on? Uh, just, just to the point where, where, where Trey said everything we wanted them to be. I am sorry, I do not want Jamie Graham to be a slick side game game changer guy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. But but here's the thing: was I, that was a reflection of the conditions, and he was still a shot maker even with that. It was not as if he went slick side and he was just sliding every bag in. I mean, I visit. I I I saw in front of my eyes him throw twelve bags in a row, in which he, he none of them were slides. It was like push cut around he was throwing cuts with game changers i mean he was throwing he was rolling with game changers consistently across the entire day it was crazy it's crazy to watch him do that yeah that's awesome yeah i hit him up and i'm like bro slick side game changer (laughs) what's going on here and he hit me back and he was like ah the conditions he was like but it felt really good and i'm like tell me you're not a slick side only guy now and he's like I think I am LOL. <laughs> and he was like, nah, but I was able to block with it and I was able to roll. And I'm like, okay, now we're talking. Uh, that, that's yeah. the Jamie Graham. If the bag like. does what you need it to do on that side, then that's what you do. Facts. Yeah. But shout yeah. out. Did you guys see Matt guy through an 11 across a tournament this weekend? Wow. God, this guy's a beat. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> that's great. I mean, he's that's the only one. I think he's the only one that can do it right now, but I, I didn't like get Harbaugh a chance to talk right there. I didn't get a chance to talk about it in the open and I didn't get a chance. I know we're tight on time, Mish, but like that. Okay. Look, w- when we were talking about Matt guy being a bag runner, not being able to beat all these guys that we were talking about him when he's at a 10, five, mm-hmm. the difference yeah. between a 10, five and an 11, one. Yeah. He threw an 11, one. That's disgust. That is, yeah. that is illegal. That is, should be <laughs> illegal. I mean, he's, he's missing two bags a game. You, you, yeah. You, Cause you that's your average. Somebody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's bananas. All right. All right. Moving into contender or pretender, I'll I'll read a name and you let me know if you think they have a chance to win a national singles event. First Ooh. one, the the uh, is it TikTok? TikTok star himself, Matthew Creek Killer. Is it TikTok or Instagram? I don't know where he's posting, but he's he's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, this is weird to say out loud because like he's already done it once and he was in a similar position, but I'll say pretender right now. I'm not seeing the level of consistency, especially in tournament finishes that I saw the years ago. I mean, in order to put him up there now, I'm happy for him to surprise and shock the world again like he did before. But we at least saw some level of top four, top five finishes, you know, before that big win. So I'm going to say pretender for now, unfortunately. Anthony? Yeah, chance to win a national singles event. Um, I'm actually going to go the other way because if you were there in Atlantic City back in 2022, Cornhole Mania, how dominant he was in that final was unbelievable and dominant in the game or the style of game that's winning today. I can't get that out of my mind, the fact that he was that dominant at the style of game that wins national singles events Yes, he's faded right now. Um, he's kind of fading right now here in the new season. Finished the pro season last year at 13th. I think I'm going to say he's a contender because I just can't get how dominant he was in that one event out of my mind. I think it's still there. Got to have yeah. consistency. Trey's trivia. Who did he X. beat in the finals? Who did he beat in the finals? Alex Rawls. Nice. Good one. Yeah. Wow. I like it. All right. 
Jacob Trzinski. Trey? Yeah, I'm going to go contender. Um, a spoiler alert here. We're going to talk about sleepers in a, li- in a little bit. I got Jacob Trzinski on my sleepers list to win a national singles event. He has been yes. close. He has Love been it. dominant. He has been really, really good. I mean, even look at what happened. And, and, and again, this is so Jacob Trzinski. But what did we see from the open, uh, the last open? Everybody sharing this video of Tony Smith hitting this crazy <laughs> shot against Jacob Trzinski, all that. Trzinski won the game. Uh-huh. Trzinski- <laughs> And he was winning it pretty big. It was like, that slide, that slide push collect up the right yeah. side, that three bag. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. I mean, Trzinski was by far and away the best player. He just took the his former partner and the MVP from last year and beat him pretty good. Boom. Like, I mean, that that's hard to do. And he's been so close so many times. He has the ability to. And that's why I'm really confident in saying contender. I'm not guaranteeing that he is going to win one, but he's absolutely a contender. Anthony? Yeah, he was the 12th best player in the year, in, in the season, or in the pro division last year, and rising in six open singles events. He's been top five every single time. He's wow. won an open singles bracket. He's been in the bracket championship two times. I think he has the mentality to go the distance. He's got the comfort and the experience on the TV broadcast contender all day for me. Jake Gore. Yeah, this one, this one's a definite yes. He hasn't he hasn't fallen off much, um, if at all. Uh, he, he's still he was a player that was top five for almost all of last year until the World Championships. I watched him this weekend, and if it wasn't for Jamie Graham just being absolutely disgusting, um, J- we're talking about Jake Gore being a conference champion in singles. That's that's an easy contender for me, Anthony. He's stacking up a bunch of opens four, five, six, eight. If he wasn't in the bracket championship. He was right there in the loser's final. The dude's a veteran at the age of 14, which is crazy to say. If we go back to national number one last season, what did he do, right? He wins his pro singles bracket, going through the eventual number two player in the world and eventual national champ, Alex Rawls. He has that airmail drag to win it, to go on to the championship, the very thing we're talking about. Hits the airmail, doesn't get the drag. He gets gored. Uh, If you want broadcast experience, he's got it. If you want mentality, skill, the kid has a deep bag. But all me contender for me. Tanner Halbert. This is tough um, because it, to me, he feels in the Cree Killer Cree Killer bucket. It's someone that you know has the talent and has the experience and has everything to go along with it in order to win. the The one hundred percent issue has been the singles consistency, and that's that that worries me. Um, now I think there's a strong chance Tanner Halbert just went through a sophomore slump last year, the year before as a singles player, he was consistently there at the end. We're talking about him possibly winning a championship, making broadcasts and singles last year after his rookie season, sophomore slump. So I know Tanner Halbert will be better this year than he was last year. However, I still don't think he's back to that point yet. I'm going to say pretender, but it's close. Anthony. Yeah. For the, for the new fans to this game, Tanner Halbert was the 2019 world singles champ. The thing is, is we talk about all these players who were contenders, who were the top of the game. Most of them have the same thing in common. They're dedicated pro players. We're talking about Tanner Halbert with a nine to five. He's got two little boys at home that he's engaged with and he's being a dad. I have to go pretender because of that. He's just not dedicated to the game like he is. I've been saying it. If Tanner Halbert, I've said it multiple times on our, on our podcast. If Tanner Halbert can dedicate like some of the other players, we're talking about a new world champion. I think he's that good. Adam Hisner. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it, I'm crazy to say this should be a shoe in easy contender. The way he's been playing, he's winning open doubles with Trey Birchfield, and he's been the better player. Birchfield's been good, but Hisner has been the – the better player. He's won open singles brackets already. I mean, and, and he's been pretty consistent his entire career. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's won a pro shootout championship. He never really had that dip, maybe within a season, but never elongated for his career. He's still throwing really well. Look, I, I, I think it's an easy contender. Anthony? I agree. Contender, I think he's playing some of his best cornhole right now. Uh, just to, to reiterate what I keep saying, and I think to win the pro national 
singles event. You got to have the ability to control speed and to score in traffic. Okay, I'm Adam Hissner. I'm not going to roll over stuff, but I have an elite level cut. I'm going to go around stuff. My airmail is absolutely ridiculous. And I have the ability to push and bring everything up to the hole. I think he has the game to win a, a pro a pro singles event contender. Steven Bernisette. Yeah, man. I mean, this is again kind of creek killer territory. He did something exactly the same. He was kind of a, a player that we didn't expect that came out of nowhere, won a big singles event. Last year we saw flashes right back. I remember in Portland, he gave Jamie Graham everything that he could handle. Um in the end, though, I just think Bernaset is is not back to where he needs to be quite yet. I'm gonna say pretender. Um I know he's putting in the work and, and, and we might see that. And, and, and he's the type of person that has that grinding mentality in order to do it. I just haven't seen the results in order to back it up yet. I'm going to say pretender for this year. Anthony. Does he have a chance? Mish, is it like a dumb and dumber, like one in a million? <laughs> so you're telling me there's, me there's a chance. A chance. <laughs> um, okay. If we're not talking about one in a million, I'm going to go pretender. And let's keep in mind, he was the 2021 cornhole mania singles champ. That was a different game back then. We're going back almost three years. The game is different. Slide shot, air mail. I don't, I think there's only one guy that can win a pro singles national event right now with a slide shot in the air mail. And his name is Matt Guy. I'm going to say Stephen Bernisette is a pretender. Mm. Wow. So you think Matt Guy can win one? You've changed your tone maybe a little bit. He's the only one that can. Uh, I still okay. think he would right. be the, uh, the, he would be the <laughs> underdog, if you will. So that leads me to the next one, Damon Dennis. <laughs> Yeah, this one's tough. Now, D Damon has evolved a little bit. So, you know, he does have kind of that cut. He, like, I kind of, I'm a little less extreme than Anthony. I don't think you need every single shot, but you would do at least need one. You need, you at least need a cut or something to maneuver around bags. If your only oh, yeah. option, if your only option when you face a block is to shoot an airmail, I think that's when you get in trouble. If you do have the ability to shape shots a little bit left and right, even if you don't have a role, you can still be successful in my opinion. So Damon does a little bit of that. I think Damon had his peak when he won that national singles event and he it, everything lined up perfectly and he had his best performance. He's won opens before. I just think it's going to be tough for him to do it in this field. I think in order to get there, he's going to have to go through a number of players that have that style that combats his really well. So at least in the short term, I'm going to say pretender, but to me, he's kind of like Halbert. He's like, He'd be on that first fringe of players right outside those that I would say in contention. Anthony? I agree with, with Trey Ascending, and that's why I said that Adam Hissner has the uh, ability to win one. You don't need a role. You just have to have the ability to score in traffic. Adam Hissner will come out of a 7-6 round and take a one all day. I think he does that consistently. It's the same argument with Damon Dennis, and here's, here's the coincidence. Damon Dennis was the 2021 national number one singles champ. Right behind him, Stephen Bernisset. <laughs> The 2021 National 2 singles champ. That game style is gone. Let me just show you something here, guys. If I look at the last 10 singles uh, pro events, I'm going to go up that list. We got Jamie Grahams, Mark Richards, Fisher Hamiltons, Alex Rawls, JBJs, and then we repeat some of those names. Creek Killer in there. All of those players have the ability to control speed, and they can score in traffic, whether it's a good push, a cut, a roll, you know, something in, in an airmail to match. I have to go back 10 events where Matt Guy won in 2022 at national number one before I get to that style of player. So I'm going to stick with this, this theory, uh, Damon Ooh. Dennis, pretender. Cautionary tale <laughs> for those kinds of throwers, I would yeah, say. We could even look at doubles last year. <laughs> we almost had an all carpet sweep in doubles last year. What's weird, the only team that didn't win with a carpet bag our carpet bag elite guys, Tony Smith and Jacob T, who were experimenting with slinkies, yeah. Yeah. they were the only ones to win. But you still, you have that theme across all of doubles as well. Definitely. All right. We've got some sleepers to talk about, uh, Trey. Who are your sleepers uh, going into this first national? Yeah, and we've kind of already talked about some of them. And I went a little less hot and a little more hot with a couple of these ones. I'll start with my ones that I think are less hot. Um, the first two are Jacob Trzinski and Adam Hisner, as far as individual players to, that, that I think are going to make really good runs. And the level of what I think is, these are players that I think everybody would unanimously say these are top 30 players. 
right? I'm saying they're going to be borderline top 10 players this season because of the consistency that I've seen from them that they haven't um, either haven't shown or we were surprised to see the level of consistency. We've already talked about how Adam Hister on the double side has been so good with Trey Birchfield. They've already won two opens and I think he's been the better player, but we're also seeing him at the ends of opens in, in those singles events. And even so, you know, there were times at certain open events where like he's the best player on the court and he just gets beat out a little bit by another player at, right at the end. So I think Hisner has the ability for exactly what Anthony just said, the ability to shape shots and just be around the hole. I put his, and, and maybe Rawls has actually modified his game a little bit more to be a roll heavy game, but I almost put used to put him and Alex Rawls in a very similar boat that they weren't always roll heavy, but they just knew how to make shots when bags were around the hole that put them in advantageous positions to succeed. And you can even say at times, Jamie Graham can be in that category as well. Someone that's got a roll shot, but doesn't necessarily lean on it. And it's just really good with bags in front of the hole. So I have Hisner and then obviously Trzinski. I think getting away from Tony Smith is going to be the best thing that there can be for Trzinski in singles. Because I think that that gives him a little bit less pressure. I think a pressure that he had last year while playing with Tony Smith was, well, every time we do well, everybody always just says it's it's Tony's fault. So I need to prove myself here in singles. And it was so much internal pressure on himself to succeed in singles. Now this year, I think you can almost have a little bit of opposite dynamic. Tanner Halbert hasn't been as dominant, right? But at the same time, he's been solid. Trzinski has an opportunity to say, hey, look, we're both going to be really good. We're both going to have a strong season. So I got Trzinski. So those are my two not surprise um, you know, players that I think just have that ability to take that next step. The next two that I have, my final two, Alec Ryan and Jordan Kimbrell. Um, now, Alec Ryan in general, we've already seen him be one of the best players on the day. He's won an open event before. But I think the big the, the big thing that a lot of people doubt is, well, it's just been an open. We haven't seen him have that run yet in a true pro event. But so many times when you look at someone that's very role heavy, that's very defensive, when that player is on for a day, they're almost impossible to beat. We saw it from Fisher Hamilton last year. Fisher Hamilton is a more even extreme version of a JBJ or an Alex Rawls. It's very tacky. It's very sticky. But when that roll is hitting perfectly and every single round is a flawless execution of block, roll, roll, push, then he becomes someone that's almost impossible to beat. And so, although I don't know Alec Ryan will be there consistently at the top, when I think about someone who could maybe come off on a one-off and win an entire event, I think Alec Ryan has that ability if he has that perfect combination and has that perfect depth on his roll bag. And then finally, Jordan Kimbrell. The world doesn't know a lot about Jordan Kimbrell, but when I watch him among a field of the best ACL pros in North and South Carolina, which includes the Jamie Grahams, the Jake Gores, the Jack Gores, the Frank Modlins of the world, and everybody else that's in the Carolina Conference. Jordan Kimbrell not only looks like he belongs, he at times looks like he is one of the best, if not the best players when we talk about that. So in general, it's I always say he's got an opportunity to really showcase to the world how good that he is. Now, he may not do that. And for whatever reason, there may be a mental block when he gets to that pro level. But when I see him on the stage at the conferences, he's an incredible, incredible player. And for that, I think he has an opportunity to be at least a top 20 player, if not a top 15 player this year. All right. Anthony, you got some sleepers for us? Oh, yeah. I got a lot to say. I'm gonna, I have to talk fast because I want to try and get it all in there, Mish. <laughs> okay. um, so when we say sleepers, right, uh, just, just to set the tone, this is this is players that – if we're talking about like, uh, you know, avid watchers or stream watchers, you know, so guys like Caden Allen, Jeremiah Ellis, Ryan Trader, Sammy Soto, these guys are not sleepers anymore. We already know that they exist. I'm going to start mine off with, I'm going to do some finger pointing here. I'm going to start off with <laughs> your top tens, yours being everybody's Wally, you guys, Bernie. Do you remember the guy who won his pro national singles bracket twice in one year? 
Let's sprinkle in three open singles championships tied for third time all, all time, by the way, behind Mark Richards and Alex Rawls. Keep in mind when you win three singles open events, you got Jamie Graham with one, Tony Smith with one, Ryan Windsor, Devin Harbaugh, Caleb Batson all have one. This guy has three and he only has two pro seasons. If I look at Wally Castler's list, yeah, he's not on there. Uh, Trey Ryder, Richard Smith, yep, he's not on there. Bernie Neighbors, not on there. Michelle Thompson, not on there. You guys are sleeping on my guy here, Alan Rawls, as a top 10. <laughs> I just want to point some fingers there, sleeping. On my top 10, I'm certainly sleeping as well. Jacob Trzinski, uh, you mentioned him winning a national, absolutely. Five open singles finishes. You know, he continues to kill it in every single bracket. Uh, and he can and has beaten some of the best in the league. I think I'm sleeping on him in my top 10. How about Derek Holland right now? If we look at him on a season average, everything in the database, this guy's throwing a 10.22 on the season. That is absolutely unbelievable. I think we might be sleeping on that guy as a top 10. And then I also wanted to throw in Ethan Walker. We saw the sweep in the open. Super talented player. He has all the shots. I think a top 10 guy that none of us are mentioning. I think we're sleeping on him looking at doubles. And you kind of mentioned them a little bit earlier, uh, Blaine Rozier and Jordan Kimbrell. Uh, I think this is a top 15 team sleeping finished 41 last season. I think they go can have the capability to go all the way for 15 sleeping on them right now. Top 20. I, I kind of like uh, this one might be a crazy one. Most people not talking about Jonathan Etheridge and Jeremiah Hector. Jeremiah Hector quietly finished in the top 20% of singles last year. He's pairing up with the rookie Etheridge this year. Misha, if we go to the showcase, Etheridge, fourth best in airmail on the outside arm. His push game with fourth best overall. He threw 110 deck around, which was the third best in the field. His block game, playing the block, was outstanding. He was fourth best overall. His overall showcase, rookie showcase rank, he was fifth in the entire field teaming up with Jeremiah Hector. I think they could surprise us as a top 20 team. We're sleeping on them. Lopez and Zaft. Lopez was 57th in doubles with Cherney. Zaft was 47th in doubles with Hadley. I think they come together. I think we're sleeping on these guys. Could be a top 15, 20 team in my opinion. Chris Kingsbury and Alan Rawls. I think we're sleeping on them to win a national. Um, we slept on them last year. They ended up finishing 10th. Um, does anyone remember the world championship final who played Jamie Graham in the final Kingsbury yeah, that Chris Kingsbury made it all the way to the final, not Tony Smith, not Matt guy, not, you know, not these players. It was Chris Kingsbury. Um, I think we're sleeping on these guys. Uh, you know, it was, um, Alan Rawls. Ah, oh, crap. I forgot what I was going to say there. Anyways, we're sleeping on those guys. <laughs> Rookie of the year. I had something to say about Rawls and I forgot it. Uh, oh, Kingsbury won the shootout as well. He won his shootout qualifier yeah. as well. Rookie of the year ballot. Soto, Trader, all these guys. Landon Crabtree, guys. Mm -hmm. I think Landon Crabtree is really, we're sleeping on this kid. Um, I think he's showing the talent uh, necessary to not just be a rookie of the year ballot, but possibly blow up maybe into a top singles player. Caleb Medenka, I think, has the ability uh, Trey, you see Pat Sems quite a bit. We don't talk about him. He has that old school style of play uh, that we would say wouldn't make a year rookie of the year ballot. I think we're sleeping on him in just the pro singles rankings. I see, I guess I have a couple more thoughts here. Ryan Hart, Ryan Hart, I think breaks out this season 45th last year in singles. I see him maybe breaking into top 20, 25. How about sleeping on Austin Renard? Dead last, <laughs> 256 last year in the pro division. I think he's playing unreal right now. What about Austin Renner breaking into the top 50 in qualifying? Wow. Player? I is think that, we might be Is that your Austin hot take Renner. since we got hot takes next? That is, is that a hot take? take. That is a hot take. <laughs> to finish off elite, uh, our elite, we got 150 whatever players. Landon Bass, we're sleeping on this kid. He could come out and jack up a pro bracket. Hayden Gonzalez. On the girls' side, I really like the Calvi girls out of Hawaii to maybe surprise us in some of the girls-only tournaments, along with Maddie McBride and Riley Schaff, who I think is an amazing player. I think she's eighth grade, maybe ninth grade, somewhere in there age-wise. I think she's going to be amazing. We're sleeping on her in the girls' division. Awesome. All right. You got a hot take, Trey? 
Yes, hot take. Don't forget about the GOAT. Matt Guy makes the singles final this weekend in West Virginia. Okay. okay. Coming in hot. 11.0. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take um, an elite-level player and a young kid, Caleb Batson, and seven-year-old or eight-year-old Cash Chamness, or Ryan Windsor and 14-year-old amateur Logan Dup Dupler. One of those two are going to finish better than the back-to-back -back champ, Trey Birchfield. Now with Adam Hiss. Uh, okay, well, mine's oh, on the same level. So I have Caleb and Cash winning their bracket. So Ooh, kind okay, of, right yeah, there. kind Ooh. of going with yours. But yep. Yeah. All right. That's all we got time for. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we'll see you all next time.